In this video, I'll discuss the plugin for undo tree, as well as a few plugins for using parentheses and quotation marks in writing LaTeX documents, as well as a nice plugin for creating multiple cursors. So to begin with, say we switch to insert mode, and if I do open brackets, then it will auto-complete the close bracket. And if I do space, it'll put a space on either side of my cursor, which is often convenient in math mode. Um, say I do for all x, um, uh, let's say var phi, right arrow, um, yeah, whatever it is. Um, if I then do just closing brackets, it will hop me, it will hop over this closing uh, parentheses um, to this, this outermost bracket, which is nice for just being able to continue on. Um, I, I could have, if I had done instead, let's, uh, let's go back. Um, if I had done, uh, let's say, uh, open bracket, and then say open parentheses, and then just say alpha, and then if I had then done closing parentheses, it'll just hop me outside the closing parentheses, and then I can say right arrow, and then I can do the square brackets. So this is a nice way to sort of hop where you need to um, in filling out uh, the line of especially um, math in writing mathematics. So that's a, a useful one. Um, another really nice feature is, say I want to um, wrap something in quotation marks. So if I'm writing a quote and I, and I know that I'm quoting it, so I say, um, say this text uh, is quoted, um, and then, I don't know, I do, I can just do open parenthesis, or open tick, and then say, I don't know, word, and then close tick, um, I'm sorry, close tick, and then it, it carries on. So, so that's convenient. However, if I'm all, if I've already written the word, and I want to then wrap it in quotation marks, it's fairly cumbersome. I mean, I can go to the beginning of the word, switch to insert mode, do open tick, but then auto pairs is getting in the way because it's already putting the close tick on the other side. And I can turn off auto pairs if I wanted, um, but then constantly turning it on and off is also cumbersome. Um, and so, you know, I might end up having to delete that and then going to the end of the word and then putting the close tick, um, all fairly cumbersome. So instead of that, uh, there's this nice plugin surround which I will link down below, where I can all from which key, so hitting spacebar, I have Y here, so let's do that. And there's a few different commands which I can run. So surround is the main one that I'll be interested in. So if I do surround, then I can select the text object. So I can do a single word, but let's do a few. Let's do um, four words, so four W. And then let's do single quote, so lowercase Q. And it wraps those four words in, in a quotation mark. And then instead of deleting these, where you know I might go to the beginning of a word, and then back one, and then X to delete, and then go forward, and then to the end, and then over here, and then X to delete, you know, or using the mouse to kind of click and delete. Um, so instead of all of that, uh, surround also allows you to auto-delete the outermost quotation, um, and it guesses what it is, and that's that's often very convenient. So go back into Y, and then K for um, kill. So it will find what the outermost quotations are and delete them. And the very same thing will happen, say I did um, uh, space YS and four words, and let's do parentheses, um, and then I can do space Y uh, K for delete those parentheses. Okay, let's, um, let's undo that though, and instead of uh, just deleting the parentheses, say I want to change them to brackets. So I can do that space Y and then C for change. And then I want to say what I'm changing. So parentheses and then choose what I'm going to change it to, which is square brackets. And so it changes them. So very convenient. Um, it's also worth mentioning that in using open brackets, um, I'm sorry, in, in using um, parentheses and square brackets, I've used the close parentheses and the close brackets 
Um, and the reason is that I didn't want any gap here between the first word and, and the parentheses. So to see what it would look otherwise, uh, let's do space Y and then change. And I'm now hitting close square brackets. Um, and then let's do open parentheses. And so in using the open instead of the close parentheses, it adds a space here on either side, which is very useful in writing mathematics to give a little bit of padding on either side of the, um, the LaTeX code for, for all of the mathematics. Otherwise, you know, it ends up looking like what I have down here where it's all kind of scrunched together, a little bit harder to read. So, so those are some nice, some nice features. Um, okay, so let's go back. So that's, say we go back all the way and we delete that sentence. Um, then suppose that I switch to insert mode and I write a new sentence. So this is a new sentence. Um, and then let's say I undo and then undo. So now we're at the oldest. And then if I redo, now we're at the newest. And I'm never gonna get back to that sentence with a quoted word. Um, and, you know, occasionally I've lost work this way, basically using undo to go back in time, find some sentence which I deleted or a paragraph or whatever. Um, and then instead of copying it, I accidentally cut it, which changes the document. Or perhaps I accidentally hit some key and change the document in some way, which prevents me from then going forward in time uh, to, to recover all of the work that I, I had done on the document since. So to avoid this scenario, I have this plugin undo tree, so, um, and it's inside which key as well, so space U brings it open. And we can see what's happening, so let's hop in here. If I go back in time, so I'm going down the tree, um, there's really just one node below in the central trunk. And then when I'm going forward in time, there's just one node above. And what I'm missing, of course, is, you know, this, well, these many different branches um, above and below. And, you know, potentially these might contain work, which, um, which I would like to resume to. So although I don't suspect I'll be in here all the time, it's, it's nice to have this safeguard. Um, and since I'm, I doubt that I'll re memorize all the different commands that, that you can do in here, there's this nice little, so you do question mark for help, and it reminds you sort of which commands do what, how to resume to different no nodes and so on. So that's a bit about undo tree and about um, auto pairs. I should also say that in addition to selecting text objects and doing surround, that you can also use visual mode. So if I hit V and then select a few words, then I can do shift S and then choose whatever it is. You know, if it's parentheses, um, you know, or single quote or double quote and so on. Um, yeah, let's actually do a double quote list shift do the whole sentence. Um, well, no, let's let's just do uh, let's do a few words, and um, go to the end there and yeah, Shift S, and then I'm going to do Shift Q for double quotes. Okay, so that's a little bit about those plugins. The next one that I wanted to discuss is um, multiple cursors, which for anyone who's used an IDE like Sublime Text or VS Code, um, multiple curses is extremely useful and it's a hard thing to let go of. So it's nice to see that, that Vim also has that capability. So let's, uh, let's copy this sentence and paste it a few times. So say we wanted to say change the word new to some other word. So using multiple cursors, so I can do Control N and it selects that first word and then control N and control N and control N, selecting a whole bunch of them. And then, you know, I can navigate around, um, but let's just keep those words selected. And then let's say, change them to, I don't know, this is a uh, brand new word. Um, okay, so, so that's something I can do. Um, and, you know, I still have these multiple cursors where I can switch to insert mode and, um, you know, add text and so on. So, so this is this is sort of the familiar scenario um, from Sublime Text or yeah other IDEs. And you know, with traditional Vim, you could do what I just did. So let's go back. Um, 
by using block visual mode, so control V and then select these and then write, let's change to brand new word. And then as soon as I do exit, it'll replace all of them. Okay, so that's fine for cases where all the sentences are stacked up. However, let's say, um, let's say this one is somewhat different. Let's say, um, let's say this is a, yeah, let's just go something like that. Okay, so, so now, and let, let's say I want to change um, brand here. So uh, with multiple cursors, I can do control N and then control N and hop over that second line and so on. Um, it's also useful to see if I go, um, yeah, let's go back. Uh, if I do control N, control N, maybe I want to skip the next occurrence or so I can select the next occurrence, then I can do control X to skip it. Um, but then control N and carry on or I can do control P to go back if I didn't want to go that far. And I can set, change just those three to, you know, where, or let's just delete them. Um, yeah, let's delete these and delete this word and um, delete. Okay. Oops. Made some mistake there. But anyways, that, that gets the, the majority of the point across. Um, okay. A, let's do, um, let's delete all of these. Um, okay, so those are the main um, plugins I wanted to discuss, which kind of help create the IDE-like environment with inside Vim. Um, it's, of course, tip of the iceberg of the different things people have set up, but this provides most of the functionality which I'm at least used to using inside Sublime.